I woke up today, and that's the most important thing. There we go. Hey, Dave Linden, how are you? Hey, fat fish heads. <laughs> it's time for another edition of the hottest new podcast on all platforms, Fat Fish. Sit back and strap yourself in for the wildest ride on the open seas. Now, lap your fins for the fabulous Fat Fish Brothers, Eric Fish Snyder and Brad Grunny Grunberg, a.k.a. Snacks. There he is. What number is this? 65. Oh, man. 65. 65. You know? I like I mean, it. wow. That's, that's 365 days of the year. So it's 52 weeks. We've got a year and 13 shows going, buddy. Goes so fast, you know? It does. It goes so fast. It goes so fast. Yeah. Man. It's great. Yeah. At this hour, I look forward to, we talk about this, and it's boring, but it's not to us. Yeah. I look forward to this hour every week because it's venting, it's therapy, and it's fun. You know, and we're going to bring up a lot of topics today. We're going to piss people off, and we're not going to piss people off. But yeah. don't you do that on a on a daily basis? Now you're saying um, sixty five, but I see it. You wrote sixty four there. Oh, maybe at sixty four or sixty five. I don't know. Yeah, what I'm going to look it. I'm going to I'm going to look it up right now. You look it up. I'm going to give you a couple very, of that. We're sponsored important. by Chuck's Tavern, Johnny yes. Cocktails. Click below at YouTube at Fish Grunny 1960, the year that I was born. Grunny was still a baby then. And then you can catch us live right. on Facebook, YouTube, yes. DBD TV, Roku, and Podbean is all our listeners. Now, thank you to our listeners. We're building no, a big this thing. is 65. Uh, it is 65. Now, yeah. You got to change that because Johnny Hardison was 64. All right. Well, we'll, we'll get it going. TikTok, 6134, Fish. Right. <laughs> so, um, we get a bad rap. First of all, how are you? I'm I'm good, man. I woke up this morning, and that's always good, you know, when you wake up. Good. So right. that was good. Yeah. Well, good. And I'm glad you woke up so you're here because it doesn't – I know 29% of all bartenders in Japan are robots. We don't – imagine a Brad Grumberg robot, you know. Uh, that, oh. That's frightening. <laughs> the Brad Grumberg robot, before we start the show out – what would be your moniker? Uh, you're you're uh, you're very good at improv. What would be the one thing you say? Like, remember the mo remember the robot on Lost in Space, Danger Will Robinson. What would be your moniker? Positivity and love. Yeah. That's how I live my life. Uh, basically, yeah, the robot would be. Uh, he would look like me, but that's not. We don't want that. Uh, but uh, yeah, why not? He'd just be making jokes, and he would be keeping it. You know, keeping it live and. Uh, Making sure everybody's having a good time, like you do, man. Like you, we do. I I have a different version of your robot. I think your robot, instead of being very iconic and very blasé and just a robot, I think it'd be funny. You pull into you know, again. You you they would they would know you pull in. You could pull in because you're a robot and you have that AI mind. You could pull into any fast food place in the planet and know what their specials are just by your digital uh, your your circuitry. You know that's true. That's true. I know a Chick Fil A today. It's two for one with tater tots, you know. <laughs> and Annie, the computer dog, that'd be great. Annie, hey, she rides with you, me, man. She rides, dude. You're Johnny Cocktails Entertainment. You got a thousand things. Do a robot version. No. Hey, I got some friends in animation. Animation would be great. You and your dog. Remember that boy and his dog with Don Johnson, 1975, with the apocalypse. How about no. you and your dog just going through L.A. and creating havoc? We do, uh, but we don't create havoc. We um, we we uh, we they, when they when they see any's put them that they melt them. So that's how it works, you know. But we uh, we spread love, positivity, and uh, we we uh, we crack everybody up at the uh, drive-through wherever you we do. go. You do you crack everyone up because you're all full of love and positivity. I'm going to have you. I'll intro the show with our first topic, but please tell us what we're drinking today because mine yeah, is a is cloud water. Peach, mango, and green tea. What are you drinking there, Mr. Grunt? I'm drinking uh, the uh, watermelon and ginger. We are promoting this unbelievable uh, drink. It's uh, Cloud Water, cloudwaterbrands.com. Uh, go to the cloudwaterbrands.com. They have unbelievable stuff. It's good for your gut. I got a big gut. 
Mark and Barry have been doing this and it is just flying off the shelves. Everything is flying off the shelves and we want to be a part of it. I want everybody, please use our uh, friends and family discount fat fish 20 and get yourself a case. Give it to dad for father's day. He'll love it. It's really, really good. Unbelievable. Real quick, before we started, I, I gave a case to Max, my son. Came over Sunday the baby, and he there. My daughter in law went nuts over this thing. Just the flavors, um, and they knew about it. And I said, "Look, we we have a chance to get a major sponsor, and and um, they have Trader Joe's in in Los Angeles. I know they did when I lived there. Yes, and it's big at Trader Joe's here in Las Vegas. So we'll plug it for these guys and hope that we get something out of it. But if you don't, right. if, if we don't, it's helping our gut and immune system. We both need that. Right. You know, Brad." I got to segue into something because, you know, we, we, we love life and we talk about positivity, but we as Los Angelinos get a bad rap in our, as, as being sports fans, the moniker, they go to Dodger games, get there in the second inning, leave in the seventh. Well, there was a movie that came out in 1986 that you would have been perfect for called stand by me directed by Rod oh, Reiner. Best movie. Classic. Yes. Will Wheaton, um, River Phoenix, yeah, Corey Feldman and a very ugly at the time. What's the kid's name? He's a he married Rebecca Romain Stamos. He played Vern. Um, um, Jerry O'Connell. Jerry O'Connell was a right. little fat kid, looked right. like me, but he he's now you know he's svelte. Oh. He is uh, you know handsome guy and really a nice guy. He uh, like you. He, well, I, that's uh, subject to uh, debate, but uh, no, uh, I try. Um, but uh, Jerry came to the Tropicana for a bachelor party for his buddy. And uh, I took good care of him. And uh, man, he, Vern, well, I would say Vern was the breakout character. Don't you think he was such a lovable fat little guy? Well, I yeah, but all those kids made it. I mean, Will Wheaton went on, all those kids made right. it, but where I'm going with this at the end, it, it's about, it's, it's about four kids in search of a dead body in early 1950s, a small town in Portland. And they want to, they think they're going to become famous and be in the newspapers. And it's really a novel, and the, the older character, Will Wheaton, is, is Richard Dreyfus, and he has a line at the end I'm going to segue into our first topic. And he says, I never had friends the rest of my life like I did when I was 12. And then dot, 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 does anybody? And when I was 12 years old, the Los Angeles Lakers were on a run. You're, I'm a little older than you are. Uh, and I'll give, you the, I'll give you the starting well, a line. A lot older, was, a lot older. A lot older, Okay. Um, the original star lineup was Gail Goodrich, Elgin oh. Baylor, Happy Harrison, and Will Chamberlain. And then uh, Elgin Baylor Hall of Famer gets injured, and here comes Jim McMillan. But the star oh. of that team and a guy that shaped my life as a kid along with Kenny Stable was this man. And when you lose people like this, that's Jerry West. Yeah. And Brad did an unbelievable tribute to him uh, on a lot of social media. I saw it on Facebook, on Instagram, on TikTok. I just said, I talked too much about what Jerry West, and you could tell what he meant to me. What about you, Brad, growing up? I went to his basketball camp. I was at Pepperdine University, and uh, it was like, wow, Jerry West. Bas I went to John Wooden basketball camp, which was unbelievable. So did I. Uh, that was in Cal Lutheran. And then I went to the Jerry West one, and it was at all the Lakers there. He was there. He was, I mean, active. You know, some of these guys just phoned it in. Jerry was there. He he talked to us. He uh, he was on the court. I mean, there were a lot of <clears throat> excuse me. There were a lot of kids, and uh, we stayed in the dorms at uh, at Pepperdine. But uh, I was with my buddy Chris Bedrosi, and he was my roommate. And uh, it was so much fun. I mean, it was so much fun. And you know. I mean, these legends, man, it's unbelievable. And it's so sad we're losing them. Uh, Bill Walton and Jerry West and uh, the list goes on. So, I mean, the, the only thing I could say is live your life every day, you know, and be happy as much as you, as much as you can. Get all the shit out of your life, all the toxicity, all the fucking crap, and just be happy because you never know. That's the thing. Tomorrow's not promised to any of us. And we both live by that uh, credo, I believe. But Jerry West was just amazing. He was just an amazing guy, amazing basketball player, but even a better executive. I mean, really, what he did, he put down, he put together Showtime Lakers. 
he put together Shaq and Kobe. And then he moved on. He he helped uh, the Golden State Warriors start to form before Steve Kerr got there. Uh, Memphis, he went to, and I think he was he ended up at the Clippers. I believe his last his last job, he was uh, at the Clippers. By the way, I want to ask you a question. There's one guy that I I'm very suspect of, and I, do you like Jeff Van Gundy? Do you like him? Do you think he's a good? Ba- I don't. I never liked him when he, he did the color on in the NBA with Mike Green. What do you think? I, I just, well, I, I want to go to West and I'll answer your question. Yeah. West had a great line. He said, they had, what's the difference between the time you played and now? He goes, well, all these guys around call themselves dogs. When I played, we were wolves, and wolves ate dogs. Uh-huh. You know? oh, and, like you know, that. about the softness of it. And it, it, it's, yeah. yeah. Jeff Van Gundy, I remember, he was the coaching the Knicks or something like that. Yeah, and there's a sure. fight on the court. And right. Alonzo, remember, he got on Alonzo Morning's knee, and he yeah. just kind of shake him off. He and grabbed him. his I was leg. Like, yeah. Go on YouTube, which we're on. And, and and just type in Jeff Van Gundy on Alonzo Mourning's knee. If you don't laugh a thousand times and send it yeah. to all your friends, I don't think he's a great. I don't. Okay, I have a problem with analysts that overanalyze. Okay, Brad yeah. Grumberg knows probably about as much as the NBA that he does, and he does what Chris Collinsworth does. I'll give you an example. Chris Collinsworth, it's fourth and one, and the team has to make a first down, and he'll say, you know, if the Bengals don't convert this first down, everyone out there they're going to lose the game we know that you idiot you know <laughs> he does the same thing you know they're they're in the penalty right now the clippers against the golden state warriors they cannot commit a foul if they commit a foul then they'll get the automatic two shots in the and it's a flagrant it's a ball. we know this okay yeah, right, tell right. us something as an analyst we don't know yeah i think his brother's better i like his brother uh-huh. his brother is a much stan stan the man he knows more and and the way he delivers it he delivers it not like talking down to you. Van Gundy is kind of like, you know, like everybody loved to hate Howard Cosell. You know what I'm right. saying? And then Bill Walton, may he rest in peace. You know, Bill went off on tangents like we're going, Bill, Bill, come back to the game, you know. And uh, who's this guy? Uh, uh, don't know what happened here, buddy. I don't Eddie, know where that's Eddie, a meme, but I mean, we'll get that's me. But <laughs> Oh, that's you? That's me. You'll see in a second. Yeah. Oh my God. It's tough. Wow. You gotta you gotta circus this thing with your finger, and sometimes it just doesn't go. That I have a certain circuit there. I do, but go ahead. Finish your statement. Yeah. Uh, what was I talking about? Um. So yeah. So uh, you know, Bill Walton. Different. Stuff, but you said Bill Walton goes up yeah, on Bill different Walton, and Bill Bill would start talking about cactuses in Arizona and the Grateful Dead, which is great. But he'd go on, you know, like you, like it was the greatest line in a movie: "Planes, trains, and automobiles." Steve Martin and uh, John Candy are in the in the hotel room and and he just he he's had enough of John Candy. So he goes, by the way, when you tell one of your little stories, have a point, you know, <laughs> when does this story end? You know, and Bill went on and on and on. It's just uh, I miss him. But uh, yeah, man, I mean, these, these are personalities. And, uh, you know, you saw what ESPN did last year. They kept one guy and that was uh, Stephen A. Smith. You know, they kept one guy. They got rid of everybody else. So things are changing. And uh, you know that TNT might lose the uh, basketball rights to. Uh, they know, did. So, yeah, they did. It's they over. almost did. And, and, yeah. NBA, yeah. It's, they, they signed a mass. They're doing a massive deal between ESPN. NBC is now back in the game. They've been out of the NBA for a long time. Right. TNT might grab some holiday games, but they're not going to have. You know, a, a, their and, and that pregame show with Kenny Smith and Ernie Johnson and That's Shaq. Done? And Barkley, it'll be done. It'll be done oh. if TNT loses. And that's I'd rather watch the pregame show and the and the halftime and postgame sometimes more than the game because they're so yeah. entertaining. So funny. They're, they're great. Oh, they goof on each other. I don't know if I told you. Did I ever tell you my uh, Shaq story? So Shaq did a movie called uh, Kazam, and my friend Pat Jackson was the studio teacher for the kid. You know, it was about him and that kid. So I went down to the set to meet him, and I said, uh, "Hey, Shaq, man." We got to get you over to the Hollywood Tropicana for a little fun. He goes, what? I go, yeah, I worked on the MC. And he goes, really? He goes, give me your card. So he got my card. One of his handlers called me. They had the wrap party for the movie at the Tropicana. Shaq wow. paid for everything. He bought, he had a tab at the bar. Everybody got anything they wanted. Shaq paid everything. And Shaq wanted to be the MC. 
So I gave him the microphone. He starts rapping and doing. Oh, it was such a fun night. Every, I mean, the other customers were there, but the whole place was packed with uh, the Kazam uh, crew and and uh, the movie, you know, the the actors and everything. It was so much fun. And I, I whenever I see him, I remind him of that. And um, I got to go to the Tyson Holyfield uh, uh, ear biting. Uh, Joe Torre, uh, comedian, and I did some commercials for this new beer called Gold Beer that Don King was coming out with. And so everybody's in their seat waiting for the fight. And then Shaq comes in at the end, at, you know, at the beginning of the fight, but he's going to a seat. And I yell, Shaq, Johnny, cocktails. He looks at me, beelines for me and my dad. He meets my dad, says hello to me, and goes to his seat. Everybody's screaming. He came right to me and my dad. So. Oh. That was yeah. pretty cool. That was pretty cool. And the, and you he's, saw what the fight, what happened there. He's got a wonderful reputation. I heard you know stories about him. I just watched a movie, I turned movies, a movie called Blue Chips that came out with Nick Nolte, where he plays like a, a basketball Great. coach and Shaq's in it. And they interviewed Penny Hardaway. This is 30, the 30 year anniversary. And they said Shaq was the most fun to work with on that film. Yeah. You know? And he's a it's just first film. He's actually he was a rookie, he wasn't even a rookie yet with the Orlando Magic. Right. Um, but are, are you are you are you familiar with what's going on with this guy? I don't know how this guy gets away with murder, but one of the guys, every team in the NFL before they get ready for training camp has a mandatory mini camp, right? They found this guy because this guy, the flat earther, I don't know what he's doing, but Aaron <laughs> Rodgers is finally found. I mean, he 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 got he had a special event he had to go to. The Jets are idiots. They're just they're 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 just. They can't say what it is because it might be embarrassing, but he missed the mandatory minicamp and taking the fines. I mean, I, how do you feel about that? I've never liked him. I've never liked Aaron Rodgers. He, I don't know. He just, he always rubbed me wrong. I, but then I saw Hard Knocks, okay? And they mic'd him. And, you know, he's kind of a goof. You know, he goofs on himself and stuff like that. But I think he's kind of evolved into that. You know, he was, he's just a real fucking cocky guy, you know? And I just, you know, with all the stuff with the COVID, he wouldn't take the shot and all this shit. And they lied about it to the NFL and the world. They used some word. I don't know what the fuck he were, you know, I didn't do very well. He said he was inoculated. Yeah, whatever that fucking means. And I'm like, come yeah. on. Wait, uh, well, he, it's, it, let me tell you something. He was never going to win another Super Bowl. And let me tell you something. It's very hard to come back from the injury that he had, Right. I don't see I don't see the Jets doing anything. I I'm really excited about our uh, our LA uh, Las Vegas Raiders. I'm very Me too. excited. The I Las really Vegas Raiders, man, and I got them all. I got Stabler, my favorite shirts, player of all little... time, Stabler. Yeah, and how many shirts are I got? Look at this. I got my remember this thing. Yeah, there's Dave Casper, Hall of Famer. I think we and, yeah, I think and here's a great that. guy who I'm trying to get on the show. There's Charles Woodson, who's a big. Oh, I love um, Charles Woodson. Big big Raider yeah. guy. Yeah, we are excited about that. But yeah. Yeah. how about this story? I mean, <laughs> get your way. Do you know who Trevor Lawrence is? Looks like, looks like Fabio. He's a quarterback yeah, at Jacksonville. Do you see the contract he signed this morning? I did not. Five years, two hundred seventy-five million extension, one hundred forty-two million dollars guaranteed at signing. Wow. It, it's insane. So I got a picture of him. What he looks like as a, at the signing. <laughs> yeah. That's what he looks like kind of in real life. The yeah. long hair, the yeah. long face. Long hair, yeah. I mean, but. The money great, these guys you know, are making, God bless them. Yeah. I mean, you take it when you can, buddy. You put it away for a rainy day. Listen, tell you, you know, some of these guys who sign these big contracts at the end of their uh, uh, their their four years, they have no money. You know, they have all these hangers on, all these guys. I got, I got a great idea for a business and blah, blah, blah. You know, the smartest guy was Shaq. Shaq interviewed with all of these people, right? And he ended up with this little jewish guy who told them this is what you should do and shaq's like wait a minute who are you he goes i do this this is what i do i'm gonna save your money i'm gonna make you know make uh, you're gonna give me two dollars i'm gonna give you back five and uh, shaq signed with him and he's still with him today you got to be so careful you know these guys everybody you know before you sign uh, the contract no one talks to you then when you sign the co everybody loves a party right they jump on the bandwagon. Oh, want, he's going to find face. out. He's going to, yeah. yeah. It's just like, you know, he's a decent quarterback. He's had two have not great years and one, and, and just the money that's going on. You're right. Get it when you can, you know, but right. 
I look at it this way. They're investing in the future. How does it work? Before we get to our next couple of memes that are funny, I'll ask you a question how it relates to the entertainment industry. Football, you're basically paying for what the potential is. Is it true that if you sign a four-picture deal with Paramount or Sony or whatever big company at $25 million of film because you're hot, if the first two films come out and they're absolutely box office disasters, do you get less of the money on your next? I mean, if you don't have, in other words, you have a deal or you get that break. I don't think they make deals like that anymore. They don't do they that. They don't. No, that was old school. 80s, you know, 70s. They don't do that anymore. It's it's really, it's uh, it's pay, pay per play. You know, it, you know the movie comes, they, they sign you. But a lot of these guys, you know, if they don't deliver, like Sandler delivers, so he'll get his number. Uh, I guess Clooney gets his number. Um, the Rock gets his number. Kevin Hart gets his number. I mean, it's all about what you bring. What you bring, it's it's the bottom line. They don't care. They don't Same. care how likable you are, how great of an actor you are. You got to bring the money, and that's why they're going to give you twenty five million. Listen, I was in striptease. Demi Moore got twelve million dollars to take off her top, and play a stripper. That was that was unheard of. Twelve million dollars for first an, an actress. I mean, you know, the guys got all the money, which was terrible. But I was so glad that Demi got uh, that $12 yeah. million dollar it, paycheck. Yeah, and in that movie, yeah, Brad had to pay the producers to take off his top. <laughs> <laughs> I did take off my top. Oh, but if we were yeah. waiting for in the makeup, and I got on stage just to you know kind of warm the crowd, and uh, she comes out, and I'm in my underwear, I'm stripping on a pole. Oh yeah, oh, good. very yeah, ugly. That, very that's ugly. not method acting for her. That's that going to put her in the no. same asylum. <laughs> but the producers loved it because I kept everybody entertained, all the uh, background artists and the and the actors. It was fun. It was a great. Uh, that was one of the best movies. Um, I had such fun. Uh, Andrew Bergman and uh, and uh, he directed it and wrote it and directed it and uh, um, and then. Uh, the producer, Mike, uh, why did I forget his name? He's the nicest guy. Um, I'm going to do, I'm going to, while you, while you ask me a question, I'm going to tell you. Tell well, you. I just want to make a comment. I, I, yeah. I, I can't believe what a great athlete. I saw a clip on uh, reels about your boy, George Clooney is, was shooting hoops with Adam Sandler uh -huh. recently. Sandler is an excellent, oh. I could just watch by his moves and his yeah. shot. Yeah. Like that, the, both those guys know how to ball. Oh, they got though know? the, they can play. By the way, his name is Michael Lobel. He was the producer of Striptease, along with Andrew Bergman. Right. They treated me so well. Oh, it was a great, it was amazing. Deserving. Just one thing. It was my first away game. I went to Florida, uh, oh. Fort Lauderdale, Miami, strip. Nice. Oh, I spent all my per diem on strippers and hookers. Thank you. My parents are proud. You still do. <laughs> <laughs> you just, whatever you may hit a lift driver. All right, this goes to the rent. This goes to mom and dad. This goes to Annie. This goes All right, to, like Coco, this is what you this get. This goes to Roxanne. This goes yeah. to... I got 72 okay. bucks left. What can I get you? <laughs> your, your hand. That's about it. Uh, this time of year, uh, it's sad because we had John Hardison on, and we both picked Edmonton and six, including mm. me too. They're losing three. I mean, they're losing three nothing, uh, three games and nothing yeah. uh, to the Panthers. And I'm shocked that it looks like Dallas is going to get swept by the Celtics. Yeah. Not shocked because the Celtics have a good team. Yeah. So I, this time of year, this is my look. This is Mark Ruffalo. Uh, looks a little bit like me, but this is a look of laconicness. It's what I get this time of year until football starts. You know, just like oh, you sit there and like, oh, what the fuck's going cool. on? What am I going to do now? You sit in the, you stand in your pool that's empty. You sit at your desk, staring at nothing. Do you ever have those kind of days, Brad? Uh, yeah, I do. I mean, like I do when I'm lifting. I'm like driving around LA, and I'm just kind of thinking about things. Yeah, yeah. Like kind of lethargic. Is that what you're trying to? Lethargic. Say? Well, yeah. well, you look like you're just like a zombie, uh, like on a lithium trip. Like, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wake up. You're, you're standing up. Are you awake? You know, and stuff yeah. like that, and. It's just, it's not really much a depression. It's like, okay, maybe it is a form of depression. It's like, I'm a big sports fan, and I love baseball, but not like I do other sports. Baseball, the Dodgers are having a great year, but they still have 95 games to go. I mean, right. it's a lot of games. Um, yeah, I, you know, I think it's, I think it's too many games. I really do. That's, you know, it's ridiculous. 162, right? Correct. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's just too many games. But it's all about money. 
the money stream. They just, you know, that's all they care about. But uh, yeah, I mean, look at exciting. You got baseball, you got football coming again. Uh, that's your favorite sport. Now, do you have season tickets to the Raiders? I don't, but I get tickets. People give me tickets. I have friends oh, of mine, my father, my Max's father-in-law. I got friends at the bar. They just it, for I go to like I don't look when I was your when I was your age in my thirties, I went to every game I could. But once I hit sixty, I, I'm not big with the crowds. Yeah. But I'll go to four of the eight Raider games. That's fine. You know, and I'll go. I'm actually going to be seeing you. I'm surprising you. I might take you. Um, you you're gonna yeah, we're gonna no. come into LA, Max and I to see the Rams play the Raiders in 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 the end of October. Oh really? And you're oh, gonna pick cool. us up in a lift and make some money for Max and I. That's gonna be, we're gonna be your wingmen. <laughs> I'm gonna charge you triple. What are you kidding me? Good. Uh, uh, yeah. Good. We'll, we'll do it. We'll go out to dinner. I know yeah, a great Italian just, restaurant like, in Marina Del Rey, and we'll go and eat. Marina Del Rey. So, what are you talking about? Where are we going? We're going to so I can't think of the name of it. My my best friend Craig. I hate when I think I know the place and I can't think of the name because I'm professional on a podcast. It's in Marina Del Rey. It's a very good restaurant. What Tony P's? Killer shrimp, not killer shrimp. I think not it's killer Tony shrimp. P. Killer shrimp is okay, killer is shrimp. I, is that where we're going? I think it's Tony P's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. great. You like great. al dente? You like al dente food? Like I'll, I like the pasta, the gravy, yeah, it's really with the hot good. sausage. That's it. And two yeah, pieces, like good. you said last week, garlic cheese bread. Oh, I'm in. Yeah, yeah, good. No, no, it, that'd be fun. I might that'd get somebody from uh, Central Casting to play me because yeah, I don't really want to hang out with. I'll hang out with Max, but you, uh, you know, Who can we get uh, to play you. We can get Jonah Hill to play you because he's Jonah, a guy. No, I don't want Jonah Hill playing. I want to get. You want Jonah Hill playing you? He's recognizable. Jonah Hill, who? No. who want, give me an actor that could play you. Maybe one of the Deloise brothers, maybe. Uh, oh, oh, here's one, but I don't want him to play me. Jeff Garland. Everybody thinks we look alike. Yeah, yeah, yeah I don't want He's him. bigger than you. Steven uh, Sharippa could play you. Uh, oh, you know, yeah, oh you know, yeah, yeah. Sharippa. You know, he's got your forehead, and, and he's and he's the friend he was. Uh-huh. And he unfortunately he passed away about 10, 11 years ago. James Gandolfini could play you. Get the same uh, forehead, the same. He'd be great. He just, you know? yeah, I just watched this, uh, this reel, his son talking about when his dad first told, uh, you know, told him about the Sopranos and he was like 13 years old. He goes, dad, what is the Sopranos? And he tried to explain it to him like, well, I'm a businessman, but I'm also in the mob and this and that. And, and the kid like looks just like his dad. We uh we lost somebody like James Canalfini was the nicest guy. Real quick story. Um, there was something called Fans of X-rated Emer- Entertainment, the Fox Awards. Okay, my friend <laughs> who I met, Bill Margold, may God rest his soul, he passed away. He was like my mentor. Like he he made all my dreams come true. Like I wanted to work on a porno set, he got me on a porno set. Okay, and he did the these Fox Awards and. All of a sudden, I fly in my buddy from Chicago, another buddy. We're standing there, and Jenna Jameson is there. You know, she was popular at the time. We're at the Mayan Theater downtown L.A. And then all of a sudden, I look. Oh, there's, um, uh, what's his name? Oh, from Saturday Night Live. I forgot his name. Um, uh, then I see James Gandolfini, but he hadn't been on uh, Sopranos yet. So I I, I, I Go up to him. I go, James, my buddies want to meet you because he was in True Romance, remember? Oh, yeah. I so I, I said, what's going on? Uh, how's the acting? He goes, well, I just did this show for HBO. Was, I was terrible. I play this guy. It was awful. I hope it never sees the light of day. The Sopranos. I couldn't believe it. I said, hey, man, you never know. He goes, yeah, but I was so bad. He was so nice. And he he made my friend's day. And uh, yeah, Wait a minute. Yeah. He... He, I asked you this on, on previous podcasts. He thought that he bombed his audition. Absolutely, they. He, wow. I think they had to reshoot something. He thought he was awful, absolutely awful. Wow. He was so embarrassed of his performance. He hoped it never saw the light of day. And look what happened. See, that's life as an actor. You never know. Right place, right time. Look at Bruce Willis. You know, oh, God bless him. Rest is the uh, yeah, uh, guy's he, going he through hell right now. First, you know? He was not the first guy for moonlighting. He yeah. was not the first guy for Die Hard. Really? The, oh, no. He was way down the list. But because he was on a Fox show, uh, I mean, 20th Century Fox show, um, uh, Moonlighting, they looked at him and, you know, he filmed both at the same time. And, oh, uh, I mean, you you got to say uh, Die Hard is one of the best movies. Oh. Yeah. 
You know, it's funny. I, I, hey, I, Hans, this is this is not TV. This is radio, Hans. Bam, bam. Oh, that's great. That was a you know, well, um, you, you talk about. I read in Variety about roles that went to different. You know, Richard Gere was offered um, Indiana Jones. He turned it down, and Harrison Ford got it. You know, really? Oh, yeah. No. Oh, oh, he he was offered. I, I think so. Yeah, that was one. Oh, There's a couple God. other ones too. That I forgot. Been a terrible cast. Yeah. Oh. Well, no, he. I think he was doing Richard American Gere? Gigolo at the time. Oh. And American Gigolo is a great movie. Richard Gere. This is true. When he did uh, Pretty Woman, he said this is going to. He told everybody it was going to be the biggest bomb of his career. And look <laughs> at that. Wow, yeah. what a great movie, right? Gary Marshall, Julia Roberts. I waited wow. on her in the commissary. She was really nice. I liked her. Yeah, she's a beautiful woman. I like her. Yeah, yeah. pretty, pretty woman. Yeah, um, pretty woman. Um, you know, his, his I, he, he, people love you talk about him and his, his his great career. But what really made him was an officer and a gentleman. That was way yes. before Pretty Woman. That was such a great film. And, and we go back. I'm, you know, I got this this streaming service called Tubi, that yeah. all it does is show movies, and they're fantastic. You know, it's all old movies, and you can get the old the classics from Here to Eternity, which. I think everyone should watch Casablanca on the waterfront. You want to see some great movies, go back to the 50s and the 60s, the black and whites. And then you have the ones that we talk about. You get Caddyshack and, the, you know, Brad likes everything that John Candy did. So do I. Yeah. You know, uh, oh, oh, my oh, favorite yeah. John Candy movie is what he said, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Because when I see an actor that's a true, tremendous comic have a role and, and kill it and dramatic role, like your good friend Adam Sandler, Adam Sandler's best roles. Or when he's serious, he's great. Uncut, he's I just saw great. Uncut Gems. My God, he was terrific in Uncut Gems. Rain over me, he was phenomenal. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Punch Lung, Punch Love Drunk, and I, I, I did. It, is is this true? Are you? Is he making Happy Gilmore remake? Yeah. What's going on now in show business is they're only doing IPs, intellectual property. He's doing Happy Gilmore too. There, you won't believe this. They're doing car wash too from the seventies. You believe Franklin it? Ajaye? <laughs> yeah, they're Rich, doing Richard Pryor can't be in it. That made money, you know, back in the day. So when they do the second one, if it bombs, they say, oh, "Wait, wait a minute." The first one made forty million dollars in nineteen seventy four. You see, these executives are scared of losing their job, so they do that. Just like a politician, they just want to be reelected, right? That's how that works. So, yeah. Um, and by the way, I just wanted to make a note. Uh, tell you, Richard Gere, American Gigolo. Wow, I said that it. was power. that yeah, was a that great was, movie. Well, that was a great movie. If if you bounced off of, let's go back. If you bounced off of Indiana Jones. You don't know that because Harrison Ford's perfect to do that movie. That was a huge box office, phenomenal. I went to go see that in Westwood at the AFCO. You know the way on yeah. Wall Street. I don't know if it's still there. Had to be a line a oh. hundred deep. Is it still oh, there? By the way, that AFCO, they redid the whole thing. It's like a real, uh, uh, like you know, it's you pay like twenty five dollars to get a ticket. You get, you know, the food and everything. It's like a, you know, real bougie. Uh, and they have a restaurant there. It's a real bougie uh, movie theater. It's, but it's it's used, nice, nice place to. Used watch. to be a Cineplex. Remember that? Like there was six. It yeah. was six theaters in there and. You know, uh, I remember. I it's a shame. Our youth, you, uh, Jerry West is just really getting to me. I think about you. Remember when you were a kid? Well, you lived there, but I went to high school in the valley. Was oh, what did what did valley guys do? We went over the hill and hung out in Westwood Village yeah, and watched the Hare Krishna. Yeah, how many right, times right, did you go? We don't talk. How many times did you go to Westwood Village just to hang out, and look for girls? Oh, of course. And then if you had a date. You take a loop around so everybody saw you with that girl. You know what I'm saying? Sure. But yeah, Westwood was phenomenal in the in the late 70s and 80s. But then oh. it got really bad. Gangs came in. And no, it was like a ghost town. Really bad. But um, yeah, man, it was. It's you know. By the way, my one of my favorite Lakers of all time, um, in addition to Jerry, was Gail Goodrich, lefty right. from UCLA. So my dad had a uh in 1980 had a uh, solar business he was selling solar energy uh to homes and uh, businesses and you guess whose house i got to go to in santa monica gail goodrich Gail-Gurdish. and i was nose to nose with him and i was a little taller than him he was so nice and we my dad sold him some solar 
but I'm like, oh my God, Gail. Good. Here, here are the people that the, I love: Gail Goodrich, Cassie Russell. Okay, he was a favorite of mine because he he always shot from the side. That's where I I was deadly. Uh, Cassie Russell, Brad Holland, Brad Holland, Brad Holland. He was my one another favorite of mine because he was a great shooter. He won a ring. He won a ring. Um, you know, it's just. LA, the one thing about LA, I just wish it was more like Chicago, New York, Philly, you know, real fans. You know, it's it's you know, it's 40 below they're sitting in their in their seat, right? The whole place is packed. That's a fan. Buffalo, New York, amazing fans, you know. And Raiders, yeah, too. like and think about our, where we came from. Think about LA and all the great athletes. You think about you, know, you talk about um the would you just said Brad Holland, I think, went to Locker Center High School. I mean John Elway, Granada. I mean, just yeah. great players at in LA, but doesn't get the kind of look. High school sports, in two. I married a woman from Ohio. It's insane what yeah. high school sports, especially football in Youngstown in Ohio and Texas, where I went to college. One thing about LA, and it's just too big. Such great high school athletes. I mean, I remember the, the Crenshaw team uh, in 1978 had. Daryl Strawberry, oh. Chris Brown, and Eric Davis was the two, three, and four hitters. All made the yeah. pros. Uh, uh, Davis and, and Strawberry, arguably Hall of Famers. I mean, Har Strawberry might be in the Hall of Fame. I'm just being ignorant, too. Chris Brown played nine years with the Giants. I mean, we had such great – but we that's all what we did. You know what we're losing right now? I get to a meme. Uh, you remember when you were a kid? I say this to kids all the time. I Max and I talked about this Sunday. When Brad Grunberg and I were kids, not together – Remember how many times did you go to a park and just found a pickup game? There's no pickup games anymore. You Basketball, you played football, football at the park. park. Where did you go? Did you go to Rancho Park, that big park? Where was, uh, your, no, where was your park no. by you? I was I lived on the border of Mulholland, so I went to the valley. Oh I would, play, I would go, I would go to Encino Park and I would play pickup ball after school. Like my junior year, I'd come home. No, I'd go to my dad's office down the street from Encino Park. I would sail at him, do a little work, and then I'd go and play pickup ball. It was sure. so much fun. With my buddy Jay Serkin, he was a great player. He went to Cal Prep. My buddy Jay. Cal Jay Prep. passed away. He's the sweetest guy. May he rest in peace. Jay was such a, he was such a Michael Jordan fan. Oh, my God. Everything Michael Jordan. Hey, Jay, uh, would you like to go uh, – want to go to the bar tonight? Uh, I don't know if Michael would do that. Um, uh, you know, everything – he he idolized Michael Jordan. It was his guy, you know, and he's from L.A., you would think. Uh, but he loved the, the way he played. I mean, there was just a special time when, special time. when, the, when the Bulls won all those championships. You know, we, we live in nostalgia, but you bring up Michael Jordan and Jerry West is Jerry West. Michael Jordan said Jerry West was my hero. Yeah. He walked up to me, never met me before. And he said, you should be the logo. You should be the brand of the NBA. You're better than I was. And Jordan was just like, are you kidding me? Wow. He goes, yes. And he tried to get it changed because the logo, the logo you see the of the NBA, which is basically the picture I showed of Jerry West earlier, this is basically based on that. That's the logo right. of the NBA. Right okay. There. Yeah. He wanted Jordan to have it. And it's like, oh, my God, are you kidding me? You know, and, and wow. Do you think they'll change the logo or no? Um, Not, not now. They're going you're gonna, to you're gonna play. You're going to honor this guy. It's just, um, no, no, no. I'd be right. shocked. No, not right now, but eventually you think they might, maybe? Yeah, I think, well, I hope so. I mean, you know, we, let's change the time, but don't forget your don't forget your history. Uh, right. I'll, I'll guarantee you this. All the Lakers will have the 44 patch on next season, you know, and that's that. Hey, are you are you a Daniel Day-Lewis fan? Yes, great actor, you know, he retired. Um, I, you know what I like about him? He, he was a great actor, you know, my left foot, you know. He he retired and he left on top. You know, he didn't do shitty movies. No. And, you know, he did the ones he wanted. He ended with the one he really wanted. And he said, you know what? Thank you so much. I had a great career. You know, all these guys, they hang on. Some of these guys hang on. They do non-union films. And it was sad because um, I love Tom Sizemore and I miss him every day. But he was doing non-union films, five grand here, three grand there. You're not supposed to. They want to work. You're in. They want to work. You're, yeah, exactly. But I'm saying when you're of that, I mean, of that elk. I mean, come on, Tom Sizemore and, and Heat. I mean, come on. Uh, saving yeah, but Tom Carter Sizemore. Ryan. Tom Sizemore, yeah. one of my favorite actors. You had a project. God, you know, the, the, may he rest in peace. Yeah. Tremendous talent. 
but he let other things outside the work get to him, or he might have achieved the kind of status of an A-list actor. He was a partier, dude. You know, you're um, telling me. I, I yeah, know, I know all the stories. Yeah, you know he. You know that's the thing about life. Here's a lesson for our viewers and our listeners. So, Tom Sizemore and Robert Downey Jr. came to LA at the same time. Okay, Tom Sizemore was 19 years old. Robert Downey Jr. was 16 years old, okay? The party was on. The party was on. They partied for years. Now, Robert Downey Jr. met a woman, happened to be a Jewish woman. And this Jewish woman said to him, Robert, I love you, but you have to pick between myself, Manish Tanar Halayla Hazet, or the partying, the broads, and all that stuff, the drugs and all that. You make the try. You can't have both. It's either one or the other. And he picked the, he picked the one. And then he got Iron Man. Amazing, you know? And he's been sober, I think, 25 years or something. But, uh, but Tom, Tommy Boy, Tommy Boy, he just partied, man. He just loved everything. He just loved, uh, he loved, he loved his work because I worked with him. You know, we did that sizzle, which I'm so proud of. I posted uh, him and I on surveillance uh, on a guy. Uh, it was all improv. But we, I just wanted to show our chemistry, so, you know, chemistry together. And it was great. And um, he was great at the improv. I just I just wow. threw him all sorts of shit. And he came back. One of them was, um, this is crazy. I go, Tom, what are you carrying around that briefcase for? Are you doing a Coke deal? He goes, no. I brush my teeth twice, three times a day after every meal. I go, I've never had a cavity. I go, shut up. He goes, yep. Never had a cavity. And this was a briefcase. I'm telling you, it looked like there was, you know, from a movie, there was like a, there was, you know, uh, kilos of Coke in there, you know, but he opened it up, a toothbrush, uh, the floss. Yeah, you, you said that to John Hardison last week about yeah. his teeth. So you're, you yeah. know, yeah, no, we, we like, have to get you, we have, like to, get you, to, we have to get like your teleprompter to there, uh, Mr. President. I like to repeat things because I don't know if you listen to anything. I listen to everything you do. No, you okay. do. You okay, do. I, want to bet? I listened I to a it. sizzle no, reel with you and Tom Sizemore. I, I was on the ground. We, I have to be delicate and be politically correct, but they did a sizzle reel where they're sitting in the front seat on surveillance and they're talking about oral sex with a woman. And I, I you could put this on anything as the funniest. And you can tell you guys are improving. And size were just an improv actor. He's just natural. Yeah. Uh, if I can get that on there and get some, you know, ways to get around some of our yeah, outlets. Beep, beep it out. Beep it out. No, yeah, I'm beeping yeah, anything. Yeah, because yeah, you'll know what you're talking about. But I brought up Daniel Day-Lewis because imagine yeah. being on an airplane because you played this guy. Imagine you're on an airplane and you're sitting next. This is true. You sit next to that. Tell me that doesn't. <laughs> Abe Lincoln. Oh my that God. guy looks like Abe Lincoln. He does. Yeah. And, and he's, yeah, phenomenal. his portrayal of Abe Lincoln was fantastic. Oh. That, there will be blood. I mean, he's one of my favorite actors. I, but you bring on your favorite actors. There will be blood. Um, my left foot. La was there a better hero stud than him in Last of the Mohicans, 1992? He's, he's yeah. just a, he's, built. Everything he does is phenomenal. It's just, uh, you know. He's so method, though, that what well, Madeline Stowe said, he's always in character. You just... Oh, you, yeah. you go, you sit in the tray. He's got, he's got to eat like he, he sits Indian style. He speaks the Indian language and you talk to him. It, yeah. it, we're not on camera right now, Daniel. No, you know? but that, but like when I did uh, uh, Sons of Anarchy, I, I had a scene with Walton Goggins. And he I love played, that guy. He played a, uh, a trans, uh, a, a transvestite, uh, transgender, excuse me. Perfect for you. <laughs> and he, uh, so, I, so basically, He's going to be bouncing on top of me. I have a nipple rings on. I have a ball in my mouth. You know, part of my daily routine. Yes. And uh, there were, yeah, I took that from you. And um, and basically, I, I asked him, I go, I want to introduce myself. My name is uh, Brad Grunberg. Uh, we're going to be working together. He goes, honey, did you see my uh, my lipstick? <laughs> me a I go, what the fuck? Is this guy going to break? That's he did great. not break. He did not break. He was this woman the whole time and he he stayed in character he was fun, he was really fun to work with and i haven't seen him since we did that but it was fun he's in a he's in a uh just fun of binge watching it on amazon he's in a post-apocalyptic it's off the video game called fallout he's the star of it uh -huh. you know if you don't don't know walton goggins is google him he's in a lot of tarantino movies and oh, he's no, in he's, the hateful oh. eight 
And Danny horrific. McBride loves him. Danny McBride. Oh, you Danny McBride. Oh, my they God. Loved, they he was so together. great. Yeah. What was the show he had on HBO that was phenomenal? He played the pitcher. Um, oh, and, um, God, right. He, yeah. And he was trying to get back that. in the big leagues. Oh, he was, oh, he, he, he was he, great. Danny McBride's funny. Yeah, he's you funny. know what's one of the great movies? What was the one with um, it, it, when uh, – uh, excuse me, when uh, um, Robert Downey Jr. played the black guy. Remember, remember, they're all in the jungle. Tropical oh, Thunder. Tropical Thunder. Oh, Tom Cruise. Is, Tom, is that great? Oh, oh great film. Yeah, that was fantastic. What did you ask me? What was the movie? What was it? What did you ask me? What, what movie, movie for what? Um, you just asked no, me. Uh, what just, movie? Um, Who was it? Who was it? Do you, you remember? You're getting old. I don't remember. You, did I ask you about a movie about what? No, about no. Somebody was in. You said you just said what was that movie he was in? Um, who, what? Well, no, it was a TV he, show he did for HBO. Oh, he played TV a show. Right, right, right. Dan, okay. Dan, look, Dan, look on your phone while I talk yeah. about this next yeah. meme. And it, he was McBride was great. He was great in them, and right. he even played a, right. a serious role. Up in Air with Clooney, which is a great film. He right. played his future brother-in-law. And he was, you know, sometime again. I love it when Steve Carell, Adam Sandler, he's, John he's Candy, down and down. He's found in there. Great, great. Go back and watch that. It's like yeah, three seasons. Great. They did every yeah, tied it up. And that's when you got, that's when the world got introduced to Danny McBride. He yeah. also was a, a serious role in one of the alien movies, alien resurrection movies and stuff yeah. like that. So, um, yeah, you, you and then that we got introduced to him and he's found and down. Check yeah. out this. You're going to piss people off. Check out this meme. I want you to read it if you can. How boys tell a story, how girls tell a story. Yeah, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. I, oh, well, yeah, boys tell a story. Track, it's it's yeah. a straight train track because you know you, right, you, you okay. never deviate because you're a guy and you're always full of shit. Girls yeah. tell a story, and it's okay. Here's how a boy would tell a story. Probably, it's just Brad getting up and going to Chick Fil A with Danny. Got up, brushed my teeth, got Annie in the car, went to Chick Fil A, got two for one. She ate half the nuggets. Here's how a girl would tell a story. All right, it's this is what he's trying to say. Got up, brushed my teeth. I don't know if I was going to use Crest or Dentine, whatever kind of, you know, and I used the soft bristle brush, and then I didn't know if the underwear was going to, I had to change my underwear because it was too hot outside. Girls sometimes could tell a story. We go, we, we go from A to Z really quick because we don't have any brain cells. We, we have, we're ADT. We just don't have any kind of thought. A girl has total thought in their story. I think next time you got to run this bit by me before. Uh, <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm saying. I'm so hey, girls are confused. smarter than we are. Okay. Uh, girls girl, are the girl, best. A girl would know that she told the, whole, the Tom, Tom Sizemore briefcase story two, two, for two straight, three I mean, straight what podcasts. Is this? How Brad, story what was that? really in the, what was what really in the briefcase? Because you bring it up every time. What's in the briefcase? Who cares? What contraband was in there that you were not, you're not telling the audience? Who cares? People like my stories, I think. In, they in my lift, they stories. do. Yeah. In my lift, I, I had some great girls in my lift last night. And uh, they were, they went, you know what they went to? They went to that, what is that, Up and Down? What is that kid's movie? Up and Down. It's like an animated movie. Uh, you got it, me. It's, it, it's like one of those animated movies, you know, they make. And they went, I go, why are you going to this movie? You girls are like two hot girls. Why are you? They went to Westwood. They went to the Avco, which is renamed something else. And I go, what's this movie about? It's a kid's movie. It's a, you know, animated movie. And they go, well, we really like, I go, oh boy. And they're like grown women. You know, these girls are in the 20s, they're in the late, middle to late 20s. You want to, it's a feel good thing. People want feel good movies. Are, right? How many, you how many new shows you see on TV or Apocalypse? Everything's about zombies. Yeah, are you, and, are and you going on. into movies or you watch on, on, on TV, Netflix? Uh, you know why I don't go to, I, I've been to a couple of movies. I don't go to movies. I got spoiled. Same as you. I have a big, giant, huge TV set. I can't stand going to movies because they sell alcohol in Vegas movie theaters, most of them. I don't care about that. I'm a bartender. I care about the fact that people talk. If you miss a line, you can't say the projection. Can you turn it back? If, you're yeah, watching yeah. A, if I'm watching Brad, if I'm watching Brad doing a great uh, Curb Enthusiasm, but then I go see it in a screening and someone's talking, they're not going to turn it back, but I could just yeah. always, always rewind it. You That's got, it. You got. I know, uh, I know before I get to this last meme and we do a nice testimonial to Father's Day, um, I do know this box offices are hurting. You know that, but I know that oh, yeah. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes did not do it's a great film. I heard it, uh, the new, uh, it, it got very good reviews. The new Mad Max with Chris Hemsworth about Furiosa, um, 
not great at the box office. Do you think that question to you? Do you think the box office is the thing of the past, and the, and and we just everyone's just waiting to watch it on TV? I think there's a lot of truth to that, but I also think the shit they're making. Who the fuck gives? I don't want to see Mad Max two. I, I I mean I do. Okay, who cares what you like? <laughs> I'm telling you, we need more comedy. Comedy, good comedies. Forty eight hours, Trading Places. We need comedies. This other this other crap is terrible. It's really bad. That's why it goes down the tubes. Those two movies you mentioned. Who cares? Yeah, but no, you're talking about you're talking about movies that go back to the '60s no, and '70s and I'm they're not good remakes. That. We need fresh shit. That's what I'm saying. Right. I have fresh shit. I got some great fucking scripts, but they're not buying them. They're buying IPs. They're rehashing and rebooting crap. Is it all you about? Know? Is it all about the CGI? Is it all about the action stuff that people love to see people, and the technical yeah, crap? The monsters and the yeah, all yeah. that. I mean, do you like that stuff? I don't, I've never been into. That. I like I mean, it all. I, I'm, I but I are totally you a video agree game with, guy. Total you agreement with you about you know when when you can go to a movie theater in 1980s and see these two films back to back. Terms of endearment and broadcast news, which is oh. funny, careful, yeah. made you think. I mean, how many Star Wars movies are going to be, Brad? 30? <laughs> no, it's true. I mean, there's no more creativity in Hollywood. I mean, you know, these monsters and the CGIs and all that stuff, it's enough. It's the it same makes money. thing. It's it's, just, okay, let me tell you something. You have a great script called money. Slices. The you horror genre is the number one genre. And what's that about? There's not. There's no creativity to having a, 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 a someone killing each other and, 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 and serial killers. No. But it works. No, but but the point I'm trying to make is you have to understand a lot of this is the same shit over and over again. It's like I'll sure. give you an example. When a hit show comes on TV, the the executive go get me the next Friends, get me the next uh, uh, you That's know right. you know uh, right. everybody loves Raymond. But the bottom line is no, you just there's one. That's why it was so good. There's not going to be one. You know, some of these shows, I can't, I can't watch them. I love Cedric, the entertainer. Have you watched the neighborhood? You can't watch the neighborhood. It's that bad from opening credits. The first word you turn it off. It's, and it's gone on five years. Yeah. Yeah, So I'm telling you the executives, they're just playing it real safe. And um, that's, you're right. I mean, I looked at what people are going through right now in your industry, which is our next podcast on on about they thought don't like I, we have to have time to do talk about our dads. But um, what you guys, everyone thought when the strike ended and the IOTC strike is happening, no one's working in Hollywood. No one. None of my friends are. There's there's there's, there's, the, there's less production in Hollywood right now than in the history of Hollywood. You know That's that. True. That's true. Yeah. You, there's no auditions. I just saw. I read an article. I read Variety like it's you know like it's a like it's a sports section after a football game after a football Sunday, and it. I feel growing up in L.A. and having my mom and my stepdad in the industry. They're retired. Not my mom's gone, but and you, you know your family, your whole family's in the in in the industry. It, it's insane. Mm-hmm. Um, and and no one has a, no one has and save us for next week to to bait our viewers and listeners. No one really has a you might, but no one really has an answer or an idea to fix this thing. It's extremely disturbing because we need you. We need laughter. We need entertainment. Well, I have sports, but how much you know? Okay, and like I just I just showed you that meme of me when it's not football, when it's when all these when the bait, basketball and hockey end. So yeah. here's the last meme, and we'll talk about our dad. Check this out. I always have to throw this up there. But I loved it. Gen X. This is Brad. Born in like 1965 to 80. The last generation before all the pussies took over. <laughs> oh, my God. That's funny. That's not photo drift shop. Some He's kid. Drinking a at the beer. Beach. Oh, my God. Of course. That's yeah. funny. That is That's really great. funny. Hey, you know, we we, we, we do our te- we do our philanthropy. We got the Nick Pasquale Foundation for to raise money for kids that can't go to college. And we talk about... The great Andrew Klein's daughter Molly with with uh, Molly's challenge to stop team bullying. And we're rooting for Keith Berman, a good friend of this show that's been the fight of his life. But yeah. every one of these people, and including you, and I can't wait to meet the man, um, has has fathers. And Father's Day is coming up this Sunday, two days yeah. from today. 
And um, I want you um, to talk. Um, and I, I will say this. I miss my dad. I have a great stepdad to my dad also. But my dad passed away in 2008. And um, if your dad is still with us, enjoy every minute. I'm enjoying every minute. My stepdad, Neil, is going to be 90 years old, and he's great. So I'm lucky. Brad has a dad, and the, the fact that they go for a shave once a month yeah, and he exactly, sees them every yeah, day. Yeah, exactly. Talk about your relationship with your dad and take us the hell out of here. Basically, my dad is going to be 92 years old, July 1. Uh, from Father's Day, we're going to take him to the shave. We're going to give him a nice shave, and we spend the day together. Um, but you have to understand something with me. Father's Day is every day. I take care of my parents for 11 and a half years. They mean the, the world to me. Is it easy? No, but I love them. They gave me the greatest life. When I hear stories in my lift about other kids, how they grew up and the dysfunction and the, their fathers and their mothers on drugs, all, I go, God, man, I'm the luckiest motherfucker there is because okay. my parents weren't on my dad. He spent all his money on his family, everything. He never drank. He never womanized. He never gambled. He never did anything. He worked. He worked. He worked. And he sent me to college. He sent my brother to college, my sister. He is just the greatest man. So now it's payback time, baby. I told him, I'm taking you all the way to the end. I take right. him to his VA. I take him everywhere. I, I love my dad. Uh, I, you know, it's kind of like my grandma. I did everything with my grandma one more time. I took her to my took her to her first premiere for striptease and three months later she passed but at least i did everything with her one more time and i got to say i love you and i'll see you again one day my dad well, is my yeah. hero my dad's you're, my you're, hero and father's day is a great day celebrate okay. it call your father see your father and that's the big thing if you're a grandfather or a father don't facetime don't call go see them live look them in the eye because They've already lived their life, okay? They're, they want to, they live vicariously through their grandkids or their kids. That's how it works. And uh, my dad has talked to me about it. He goes, I, I love seeing my grandkids. I love hearing their stories because that's what life's about. It's all about, you know, Family. the circle of life, the circle of life. Right. And your dad. I want to wish my dad a very happy Father's Day. We're going to go for a shave and, uh, and probably a uh, massage lucky finish no i'm kidding <laughs> no <laughs> at 92 i don't think my dad could get a stiffy i don't think so oh yeah he can I, what you uh, he can yeah don't don't underestimate Gary. Hill? that's Blue a Hill? tough son we're gonna get like you said Blue look what he Hill? did he put he put his whole life into his family your mom's a beautiful woman she's younger she's 83 got 92 year old with 92 year old father but if your mother is, is everyone loves their mothers because they're your first love you know your dad yeah, is a guy. No matter how strict he could be, he still threw your first ball, you right? Know? And he right. still, you still remember watching games with him, and you remember the talks. Sure. And I remember, I can't say it because my uh, my my dad Marvin was a little bit racist, but he talked about the smallness of of Asian girls' hands and what that meant to a guy like us. You know, use oh your my. imagination. Oh my god! But before you, before we see, I got a, I got something to give to Jerry from you. Okay, uh -huh. Jerry, I've never met you. I will. If you're gonna watch this podcast at 58 minutes and 25 seconds, this is a kid you, you this is a kid that I met Brad Grumberg in 1992 and developed a friendship right away when he was trying to push a pilot for Fox. But this is a kid you raised that's done 120 things in a business, and this one is the my favorite. This is to you, Jerry, from Brad. <laughs> It's a blast from the past All your favorite arcade games like Asteroid, Centipede, Defender, and Galaga So polish up your old moves, you'll need them to survive the arcade classics Now available in two-in-one game packs for Game Boy and Super Game Boy, baby I love that commercial, oh uh, my god I, I always get people saying, put that on. I get I get emails. Get Brad. They love the little uh, thing at the end. You got the little, jiggle, little, you know? a little jiggy. A little, oh, uh, no, it, was, it was That was a very popular commercial. I was so blessed to get it. And uh, dance, uh, this girl named Sandra, she taught me how to dance. I mean, 
we we practiced for like two weeks and then we were on that on that dance on that dance floor for two two days oh was i tired but it was great it turned out great uh you know um uh gary valone shout out and robert clifton they wrote that commercial and they cast me and we just had a great time oh these guys and by the way every time i thought i was done let's go back to one do it again do it again but it was all worth it it was all worth it hey happy father's day man you're a great father Thank you're you. a great person have a great Thank day you. i love you buddy you 65 too. is now officially in the books we'll change that 64 to 65 and dave linden take us home you've been listening to the fat fish podcast heard on all your favorite platforms until next time <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.